name's Nadine. Welcome to Crazy Nia, my podcast about knitting and sewing, just making um, and living simply. Uh, so I thought I'd try something a little bit different and film with the window behind me. Um, I think it's like uplighting my face. I don't know. Anyway, I'm um, glad to be back. It's almost mid-July now, almost the end of July. What am I saying? It's not mid-July. Um, and I've been busy. I've been off for a week and um, I've had lots of makes. So I've got lots of time to make. So I'm excited to share some of those makes um, and share a little bit about what I'm knitting on and um, maybe some plans. So this just reminded me that I don't have my list of things I wanted to talk about. Um, it's not true. I have it here. I just... Awesome. <laughs> I just need something to kind of keep me a little organized. So, um, so now I have it. Okay, so um, if you have been, if you follow me on Instagram, you have seen some peaks and um, actually some finished pictures of a blanket that I just finished knitting. Um, and it is right here. Um, kind of, it's all garter stitch. It's a log cabin um, blanket knit with um, just my random um, wool and alpaca and um, yeah, just my odds and ends, my little bits. And so, um, it's funny, this, this blanket has a funny story. I actually started knitting it as um, as a cardigan that I was going to make for myself. Uh, it's a free pattern, um, uh, Karen Templer of um, Fringe Association um, had a cabin knit along last year and I didn't participate, but I watched and some patterns came out of it and including a log cabin um, cardigan. And um, I've actually knit uh, a kind of a log cabin blanket before, but so anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. So when I cast on, um, I started, and I think, I don't know if this was the starting block, but you can kind of see that you start out with this and then you knit a, knit from the top, I guess that would be the second one. And then I knit on this square and then I knit on this square and then I knit on this, like not square, rectangles. And um, as I was doing it, I was like, I don't know I, um, if the gauge is right. And I um, didn't know if I had enough yarn that would maintain that gauge. And so I decided to, um, well, because I had knit a blanket very similar to this, that um, I kind of knew what I was doing. And then I was like, you know, I think it would be better if I did, you know, did it up as a blanket, because then it doesn't matter if it doesn't fit me and, or someone else I know. Um, and, and we love blankets here. So I was like, I'm going to make this into a blanket. So that's what I did. And I knit nine squares and then kind of joined them all. And you'll see like each one is a little bit different. Um, there's this one, that was probably one of the ones I started on. Um, and I just gathered up all this yarn and it's really cool. This this gray and this mustard are both um, some wools my oldest brought home from Iceland when she was in Europe for the year. And so I was able to, I didn't, she didn't bring back a sweater's quantity and without going and buying a whole bunch more wool, which I didn't need. Um, this is the perfect project because I was able to use up those, um, those squares. So I, I used a lot of grays, um, lots of cream that I had left over. I remember I had um, pulled a whole bunch up for um, my alone together sweater. So um, I still have a lot of that out. I also used a chocolate brown. You can't really tell, but it is a chocolate brown and some other grays. 
Um, and so just made an I can stick in um, the picture of the, the finished product, but it is super thick and super awesome. I love it. It's um, not the size of a bed per se, but it's definitely um, a big giant throw blanket and it can go at the end of our bed. It can, um, it is quite warm. Probably not the best knitting for summer knitting, but um, I had to turn on the AC for that. But that was really, I was so excited. Um, blankets usually take me uh, quite a bit of time to knit because it's like the size of a couple sweaters, but I was really excited to knit this. And so again, um, I should say that I just kind of made it up as I went along um, using that basic square um, and then picking up. Um, so I knit the nine central squares, log cabins, I guess, squares. And then I um, joined, I used um, knit panels in between them. So um, if there were three squares, I would pick up stitches along one square and knit a rectangle over and then slip stitch, um, crochet slip stitch it onto the next, um, into the next square. And then again, pick up the edges on this one, knit up, you know, knit back and forth and garter stitch. And when I got to my, I think they're all 20 rows of those, at least those, um, you can tell like the edges. Um, these are all 10 ridges, which is 20 rows. Um, yeah, and this is the 40 stitch and this is, a, this one is a square using the mitered square. So you cast on the 40 and then del delete, <laughs> Sorry. total computer geek. Um, and then you just, um, decrease along the center stitch, um, until you're down to the end and you have no more stitches left. So, and then I would build on those with the rectangles. Anyway, it was a lot of fun, um, a lot of ends to weave. Um, I was able to use a lot of my stash, which was, um, which is my goal all the time. So I was really excited. I didn't need to have a sweaters quantity. I could kind of make it up as I went along and the colors kind of stayed with those um, very neutrals, but um, with that pop of gold. Uh, so yeah, I'm really happy with it. I do not need it right now. It is quite hot and sunny out. Um, but um, yeah, so that was my first project. Um, and uh, one that I wasn't planning and happened along and really enjoyed doing. So um, if anyone, I should try to write up what I did with it um, before I forget. So I could either make it again or, um, or someone else could. Um, make something similar but I actually got the idea from I have this blanket it was a Mason Dixon pattern um, and I used all my ends from and they're all mitered squares and so I think after having done this um, I was pretty confident in picking up stitches you can see they're all this is a really hard one to show but um, so I had knit this a long time ago, loved it, um, really enjoyed knitting it. Um, it's very squishy. It's one of the ones everyone goes to grab. It looks like a quilt. Um, even the edges are all like the border, They're all mitered rectangles, which is really cool. Um, using what was in the, there's so many colors on this one. Um, and then there's an eye cord edge on the end. It took a long time, but I, anyway, but it's a very popular blanket in this house. It looks like a quilt, but it's not. Um, yeah. So that is my second one. This one's a little bit more neutral, a little bit nicer. I was thinking it would make a beautiful gift for someone, but, um, I can't bear to part with it. I love it. So that was that. Um, I also knit, I think, I'm not quite sure if I showed these socks the last time or if I was finished, but they are now finished. They're just Hermione's Everyday Socks. They are finished. I can't remember if I 
had them finished at the last last episode but um there you can see the pattern it's just knits and pearls um very easy to remember and and just in case i didn't i think i had some little scrunchies i used um i kind of did use a little bit of a pattern but then but my yarn weight was a little bit different so i kind of i think i did um like it's just knitting a, a rectangle um, a long rectangle and doing about three inches oh my goodness i want to say there's like 90 something 94 stitches on this a long rectangle about three inches and then i f um joined it up at the end you can't even tell i must have mitered it No, I didn't. The ends, because the ends, the bottom and the top, I've slip stitched together. I don't think I showed this, because then I would remember how to explain this. So it's a long rectangle. I stuck one of my hair elastics in here, and it is now a scrunchie. Um, and then I did another one in pink this one is so i'm going to use up some of my sock ends to knit a whole bunch more of these i wouldn't again i don't feel like they're very summery thing but i think in the fall this would be so cute um this one has like it feels like a little bit of a puck or something in it but it's so lovely what a neat little gift and it didn't take long very mindless I could watch TV which was awesome so there was that and then I've actually been doing a lot of sewing um, which is um, yeah I I love to knit and I want to be always knitting and I find I enjoy knitting I find it meditative um, but Sometimes, like, I have so much, and I think I've mentioned this before, I have so many sweaters and so many socks and um, hats and scarves and mitts that it doesn't make sense to be constantly knitting. So I do have an, a pair of socks, and like I said, I could be doing some of those little scrunchies, but um, so I've been doing um, some sewing. So let me just... Um, you can see, I wonder if I can get that down. Um, oh my goodness. Okay, so this is the LB Pullover. I used a really pretty purple, um, no, not purple. It's a dusty rose, but it's not really a dusty rose. Like it's almost like a gray pink. Oh my goodness, I love it. And you can tell I did the bias binding and some baby blue. Because <laughs> I don't want to make my own. And I got a whole bunch, like a mountain of just baby blue stuff for free. So anyway, so I finished this. It's just, um, I squeezed this out of one meter of, um, of linen. So, um, and then I also made these really... Still see the F on them. Some pants out of this beautiful kind of um, the first thing that comes to mind when I see these is like scrub green, like um like a scrub green. Like but I think they're much better than that. Anyway, I've made those out of some linen too. And that was maybe about a meter and a half. Now this is the Owen pattern from the Lotta Jam's daughters. Um, Lotta Jam's daughter. Um. Uh, everyday style and that is a book I knit, er, knit I sew out of um, quite often it is um, I think I showed it in another episode I love this book so it's got like um, a top a tank top um, the tops can be made into dresses 
the pants can be made into shorts. So it's like one pants, one or so one bottom, a couple tops, um, a skirt, a jacket, um, a couple bags. Um, but yeah, and you can make them out of. They're very versatile. They're very simple to sew for a beginner, and um, and just I think a really an, a simple style that can, depending on your fabric, make um, make something fancy or make something um, simple and cozy. Uh, and, and, and it's actually styled all through the seasons. So you can see the patterns being used in the winter and the fall and the spring and in different, uh, different sized people's um, bodies. And, um, and then the way that like, taking on the person. So even though she's got a style that's all her own, it's very Swedish, very simple, Danish, like it's very, um, very artsy and creative, but she takes like all of her friends and all kinds of different personalities and body, body sizes and has them, um, not make their own, I think, but uh, pick their own fabrics and style it themselves. So kind of taking this, um, these essential pieces and really showing how they can be personalized and um and for different activities as well like so when you know one person who's very deep into yoga and how she uses the pieces for her yoga outfits and another one you know might you know wear some very fancy and might wear them to the office um so i love that book and so um that's where the pants are from that i just made and then today i also just finished another pair um, this time using uh, cotton gauze in this almost um it's a brown you can't really can't tell from the sun can you um, maybe right there you can that's probably more the color and it is uh, if I get a little bit closer I don't know if you can tell but it's a little really textured it's like a, a cotton gauze so super light and again, it's in that Owen, and they're just comfy because um, it's elastic. I think over 40, you can get away with this, and I think you can get away with it before too. But what's really nice, and um, my thread doesn't match because I didn't want to go back up. Look at that, they're a little see-through. You can see the window. Um, it's just a straight at the front. It's just a straight flat front, and then an elastic back. So it's nice because um, they lay flat where I do not need the pleats. And um, yeah, it's just really cozy and comfy and these ones will be really light. So um, I really like this. I really like that color. Um, looking, and always in the summer, I'm always thinking like beachy. Um, so those are my pants. Um, and those kind of colors, so those like muted, um, almost dirty um, pinks and muted dirty things. <laughs> Doesn't sound good, but um, trust me, muted, dusty, maybe it's better than dirty. Mm -hmm. So I made all those things this week. I've made a couple of fen dresses um, out of bed sheets and stuff, and they're not. Um, uh, I did try, okay, <laughs> I tried wearing one um, yesterday out to, um, we were doing a little bit, a little shop, um, B and I, and um, I looked like a large six-year-old, so I'm not quite sure if that's, I think my problem with the fan dress, um, I would show it to you, but I don't think anyone needs to see that, I've decided, um, but I can put some pictures in there too, but I find that the... Um, the neck is just way too wide and dippy like it almost looks really big like I'm constantly it's just too big kind of like this shirt but even bigger if that's possible um, and this I don't mind it's drapey and, and less but um, on a dress that is and then yeah it's not uh, I don't know what I'm thinking I think Okay, perfect. So, um, yeah, so 
that was my the fun dresses. Um, I learned how to. The nice part about those dresses is though that um, uh, there was some gathering that I learned how to. Well, I had done gathering before, um, but um, to do it in such a big piece. Also, the um, doing the pockets. Uh, wasn't as scary as I thought it was going to be so and I want to put pockets in everything that being said I didn't put them in the, the two pairs of pants that I just finished in, um, sewing so um, but uh, pockets no longer scare me so um, yeah so that has been um, what I've been up to this week um, I'm trying to think of what else we did with our vacation um, just lots of house stuff and um, a beach night and um, in the summer generally and I say beach night um, usually from about June till the end of September the beginning of June to the end of September um, we drive down in the middle of the week to the beach we're about an hour away um, and have our dinner um, on the beach and watch the sunset and that gives us a couple hours by the water and in you know feet in the sand and um, smells of the lake and um, you know we meet up with my parents and my sister and my niece and and um, Bea comes along with us so um, yeah it's just usually the six of us. Um, but yeah, it's a nice way to break up the week, have something to look forward to, um, and not just the weekend. Um, it's a way to disconnect um, from our screens and and connect, um, you know, on the ride there. It's an hour there and an hour back, so lots of time to talk and dream and plan and catch up. And yeah, and then on the beach we eat and take pictures and um, catch up with our family and just um, just enjoy uh, being near the water and listening to the water and, um, and sitting outside and, and just being and connecting to the lake and the water and the land and the sand um, yeah it's quite lovely and it's um, it's usually a pretty quiet beach in times of COVID it has become a respite for lots more people than just us so um, but then this week there was only a couple other families um, sitting there as well so um, and uh, there's lots of beach to share so that was kind of nice and then let's see what else. Some beach nights. Um, uh, we I've um, been making some cold brew coffee, so that's some kind of um, a neat treat. Um, so it's just uh, basically brewing um, coffee grinds with um, water and leaving it in the fridge um, overnight, and then filtering up those coffee grounds and um, adding a little bit more of the filtered water and then it's basically ready to pour over some ice and some throw in some milk. Uh, it's a nice little treat. Um, pretty frugal so I don't like going to the store if I, or going to stores going anywhere and especially in times of COVID I don't want to be going to stores but um, a neat way to, you know, something that might cost three or four dollars at the store costs me a little bit less to make a big batch here at home. The other um, neat summer treat that we love to um, enjoy uh, is um, paletas, um, like a Mexican popsicle, and it is. Our, um, we make them using, um, we have a popsicle mold that I invested in last year and uh, our favorites um, are kind of a creamy one, but instead of using dairy, we use coconut milk. Um, not that we don't have any dairy issues, but um, 
the coconut milk kiss kind of gives it I love the taste of coconut so um, and coconut milk with um, whatever fruits we have on hand and um, over the last I think about two weeks ago um, on all of our walks in the morning my neighbor and I picked a lot of there were um, mountains heaps of black raspberries out in um, the coves which is uh, a little nature area a wild space along the river that we walk through every morning um, it's about a five kilometer walk but um, as soon as those berries came we were taking little buckets and um, picking them in the morning so our walks were a little bit longer um, but we have been rich in raspberries for the past two weeks and so we've been using our excess in um, well, smoothies but also in in these paletas so um, we also uh, kind of thicken them up a little bit I put in a little bit of chia seeds like a tablespoon a couple tablespoons of chia seeds in with the mixture to make about 10 and um, uh, about another a tablespoon or two of maple syrup to sweeten it up a little and it has been lovely and throwing in a banana um, and the last batch was a really good idea, but we've done blueberries and strawberries. Um, I think I would really like to do a coffee one, but I don't think Bia would, um, she's not a coffee drinker, so she would not enjoy that. But um, yeah, so those are a really neat treat and very easy to make. And again, um, very low cost uh, because I'm using stuff that we have on hand or that we're not eating. Um, and it's not being eaten up fast enough, so I'm not wasting any fruit. Um, and it, oh my goodness, it just feels like such a treat. Like this, something, it feels very fancy, and yet um, much more fancier than like a watery fruit popsicle. It's um, it's a neat treat. Um, and what else? Let's see. Yeah, so there's the, the cold brew, the palettas. Um, that has been um, bringing us a little bit of joy this summer when it's been really hot and yeah so that would be that um, still doing our morning walks um, which has been lovely um, made it through that hot spell it's suddenly gotten a little bit cooler in the morning which is I mean not cool cool like I'm talking like mid-20s instead of <laughs> mid-30s I'm talking Celsius I guess I should add um, so yeah, uh, those are the things that have been, um, we've been enjoying. Because um, this is the week, uh, this um, sadly was a week that we were supposed to go to Halifax and um, on the eastern coast of um, Canada. We had never, we had never been out there before and um, Bia is thinking about going to the College of Art and Design there in Nova Scotia. So we wanted to check it out and um, just soak up the East Coast. Uh, I feel like East Coast is my vibes. Those are my people up there. They don't know that. But um, yeah, I... The cooler. I don't know. I think um, I would love it living on the coast and being so close to the water and I feel like there's, um, there's a lot of creativity there and it's a little bit simpler and slower maybe I don't know um, it's the vibe I'm getting and, and people are really friend like known to be friendly and um, for anyone that knows me and this I love a good nautical theme to anything so the boats and the ships and the fishing and uh, I love seafood and I feel like there's a lot of makers out there as well and yeah I just want to get away from highways and I know they still have um malls and, and capitalism but I think that there's also it seems a little quieter and, and slower and, and not in the sense that I don't know 
don't think it's I you know we intentionally live a little bit of a slower life I don't um, over schedule and I like to make things and enjoy the making process but um, yeah I just feel like we live in this uh, you know we're constantly spending time in cars and in traffic and it's that escape to the country. I don't know if anyone watches that. I loved that show. I'm addicted. And if there's, if I just need like a little salve to my heart or my emotions, I like to, I have to do something with my sock. <laughs> um, I try to, you know, you can find almost every episode is on, uploaded onto YouTube and it's, it's a, a show in the UK where people living in the city are escaping to the country. And I think sometimes that's I would like to be. Um, but maybe not in the country here, but in the country on the East Coast. So anyway, so that's where we're supposed to be this week. We're going to be exploring and taking in beaches and museums and art galleries and checking out the, the school and um, taking in all those vibes and soaking it all up. And unfortunately, we couldn't, but um, I know there's always next year and um, she still has a year to go before she has to decide. So we'll, you know, we'll find a way out there um, before then to, because um, I think she would also, well, she would really enjoy it and I think we would really enjoy it as well. So that has been happening. Um, we went to Point Pelee for the day. It was beautiful. Um, it's a, uh, a national park, uh, which is maybe about two hours away from London, um, kind of southwest of London. It's um, also the most southern tip of Canada, so as far south as you can go in Canada. Um, and so it's, it's just a beautiful area. It's great for birding. Um, you know, we went on a beautiful day. It was quite warm and had a lovely walk on the boardwalk. And then we went to the beach. Um, yeah, and had a picnic and it was lovely. Um, so that's, that's been what we've been up to this month. Um, I'm currently working on, um, as I said, a pair of socks. I'm using another um, skein of lovely yarn from my friend at the Loving Pash Yarns. Um, I don't have the, I don't have what the colorway is, I don't know if you can, you can see that, it's got, it's like, um, there, maybe that's a little bit better, there you go, it is a single ply, um, yarn that I think is a super wash maroon. Maybe merino, but um, I'm wearing weight, and it has it's kind of this lovely tea color, um, kind of a pinky brown with um, just little spots of the, the blackish gray, but also some rust, some rusty tones or brassy tones in there. Just beautiful. I'm really enjoying it, I think, because it kind of would match that. The pair of pants and the shirt I just made, it kind of reminds me of those muted colors. So yeah, so I've been enjoying knitting on that. It's the, the pattern is the simple skip sock and um, it's, you can see the pattern in there. It's a very easy one to memorize. I don't need to. Oh, you can kind of see it on this sock a little bit better. Oh, I love that one. This one's just so pretty. I also need to go to the optometrist. Having, um, of course, I had meant to go to the optometrist this year, the early beginning of the year. I was waiting for some, a nicer weather so I could walk down. It's not very far from my house. Um, I mean, far enough that it wouldn't be nice in the cold weather, but um, now that it's a little bit closer, but of course, 
it was closed um, for the first couple of months of COVID and now that it has reopened, um, the appointments are quite booked up, but I am practically going blind. <laughs> so, must, it's on my list of things to do. So I have to get those checked out and uh, get my prescription updated. I think a little bit stronger is because um, otherwise I'm spending a lot of time looking at the bottom. I've got bifocals, <laughs> so I can see really well at the bottom of my, I'm just constantly, that's fine. Um, I'm making do. I think that's everything. Um, I've got another week off coming up. Um, so I go back to work for a week, which is still working from home, which is lovely. Um, it's been lovely and uh, very productive. Um, but, um, yeah, go back for a week and then I'm off again for another week. So this was um, the first week in August was the week that I was supposed to go to um, a slow stitch gathering um, retreat uh, down in Maine. Um, and so unfortunately, due to COVID, um, it has canceled um, a couple months ago. And so I had that week off and what I thought I would do is maybe some more um, making. So I have some other projects I'd like to, um, to you know, to tackle on the sewing machine. Um, uh, maybe a couple more shirts and some pants. I would love to do a skirt. Um, that's basically my whole summer wardrobe um, as knit um, items. But um, I would also like to do a I think this slow stitch, so I was trying to like, what are the ways I can make that slow stitch retreat here at home? And I think that, um, so like I was looking at some of the, so I'm like, what can I do um, to bring the retreat here? Because I mean, there's a lot of, it's just things. And I, of course, I think that there's a lot of community that happens at those retreats. And so I will miss out on making all of those new friends and um, new connections, um, but, um, you know, maybe that's another year and maybe this COVID year is a year for more self-reflection and, and spending time with myself, but um, P is also here at home as well. So um, I was thinking of like so some of the, um, the little workshops that were part of the retreat was there was one on natural dyeing. So um, I have picked up some so, well, I have a couple of linen shirts, but um, I don't quite like the color, and I was thinking of over dyeing them. Um, and so I've picked up some dye, some maybe some blues, um, and indigos. And so I think what I will do is um, maybe spend a day where we're doing some dye. Oh, and I also <laughs> dyeing. Um, I also have been collecting avocado pits and skins, which can make a lovely dusty pink. Um, uh, color and so I was thinking I'll make a dye pot using those um, using those those pits and the the skins um, and then do some more dyeing with that as well um, and then and I have a couple things that you know I'd like to dye so that's not a problem um, and then I was even thinking like there are a couple things that I would just like to over dye like things that, you know, maybe at the pattern that uh, maybe it's too bright or um, maybe not quite my colors, but um, just, yeah. So knowing that um, if I'm not wearing them now, it's not a loss if it doesn't work out, but um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to kind of just spending a week doing some creative activities. So it could be the dyeing. Um, I would like to also make them make a jacket so, and then maybe some quilting and some slow stitching so when I found out I was actually going to this retreat it was the time I actually made um I was making these little quilted placemats and I've shown this before um but yeah it's just I it was from a making zine so it's it's too small to be a placemat and it's too big to be a coaster, but I use it every day and it's, um, I, sorry, there's a thing on it. 
yeah, so I just stitched those three fabrics here. So there's this dotted one and just a pale pink and then this floral one. So I stitched them together and then I um, stuck some felt in between. So it's, it's not quilt batting, but it's a, a thick felt that I wasn't using. So I used that as the, um, the, the lining, the quilt batting. And then I stuck um, just a, a solid of the, the little dots on the back. And then I just slow stitched, I hand stitched, and, and you know, it doesn't look beautiful, but I, I love it. And I just sat there and I stitched it all in one day, um, just doing some lines. And um, I think on this other one, I used a different color. Like on this one, I used all gold thread, but on this one, I used some pink thread. And I just made them kind of random and Oh, I even added a little, couple little crosses on that one. I love that. Um, so I have these little matching ones, and I use them all the time. And I thought that was, this would be a neat project to do on a larger scale. I had a lot of fun. I don't know if this is normal because I don't enjoy knitting as much as I'm sewing as much as I love knitting. But I loved, and I found it so... Uh, meditative the sewing of the binding hand sewing the binding onto this so it's like my favorite part and I made this binding so apparently I'm not too lazy I can do that so um, yeah so I think I'd like to do this in like a larger scale um, <laughs> like a placemat <laughs> or maybe not a placemat but maybe just like a table runner or or maybe it's a wall hanging, like maybe it's a scrappy piece of, um, just make it up. And I think that's what the slow stitch was, um, retreat was about, was kind of um, being more creative with the stitching. So I've got some ideas. Um, uh, so I think, I think that's what I would like to, to do with that week off is just spend it making, but, um, being a little bit more creative, even in terms of like that blanket, like not, I think with, um, yeah, just being more creative in my textile arts and, um, you know, maybe adding some music, maybe we'll do some yoga. Um, I can, you know, maybe we'll, I'll make some nice meals or some, like a paletas outside, or we'll take our stitching outside. Um, our backyard has got these big giant leafy green trees um, and we can sit under the shade of those and listen to the birds and do our little hand stitching because again we don't have to be sitting um, at a desk or like in, at the sewing machine for uh, some of these hand stitching activities or I know Bia loves to do weaving we can do some weaving as well she can show me how she was doing her weaving um, yeah, but just um, being creative and um, and making art using um, stitching and, and fabrics and string and needles and and all that sort of thing. So yeah, so I think that's that's what's in the plans, and maybe I can take some you know film a little bit of it and share it. I've been really enjoying vlogs lately, like so we're seeing people's parts of their days and as they go uh, you know as they go through their days and um, just yeah following people along as they're um, yeah going from you know to their activities or. And just finding some inspiration that way, some 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 rhythm and the beauty that happens in those day-to-day -day rituals, um, and seeing how other people do that, and um, I find them very inspirational and very relaxing. And um, yeah, so maybe I'll you know maybe work on something like that for um, this that would be lovely instead of listening to me yammer on whoops um yeah doing a little bit more of a follow you know coming along with me on my day 
So maybe that's also what we'll do on our um, my stitch retreat, slow stitch retreat. I think it's called um, a gathering of stitches. Isn't that pretty? Mm. So yeah. And I've been enjoying some podcasts, um, like the audio podcasts, um, on the tablet, and listening to those while um, I'm sewing or knitting. Um, I've read some good books. So yeah, I just look forward to doing some more of that this summer. Um, just slowing down and listening and reading and stitching. Yeah, I think that's it. And lots of eating. So I hope that, oh yeah, so I, um, yeah, I hope that um, wherever you are, you are safe and healthy and, um, yeah, just trying to get through day to day. I get that 100%. Um, we've had some <laughs> rough days <laughs> around here and when things don't go exactly as planned and how that's frustrating. Um, and I'm not even talking about our trip to Halifax. That would have been lovely and we were really looking forward to it. But um, sometimes there's, um, well, I also love staying put as well. So, and um, hunkering down. So uh, just seeing the good in each day and, and um, practicing lots of gratitude. <laughs> Sometimes we need to be reminded of those good things. And so, you know, when something goes wrong with the house, I'm like, well, thank goodness we have the house to have things go wrong with it. And, um, yeah, or when, you know, my whole body aches from, <laughs> from dealing with a house crisis, um, then, you know, thank goodness, um, I was able to do all those things and I had the ability to wring out lots of towels. Anyway, so I think that's about it. That's it for me. Um, yeah, hopefully it won't be a long time before I come back to the space. Um, but until then, uh, I will talk to you later. Happy knitting.